Welcome back. This is lesson five of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 10. And in this lesson, we will talk about Kubernetes. If I look up Kubernetes, you can go to the official page and we can see that Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. What it means that we can use Kubernetes to deploy Docker images. It will manage them, it will scale up, meaning it will add more instances of our application when there is an increase in load, and it will remove these instances when the load decreases. So it gives us a way to take the Docker image we created locally and deploy it to the cloud and it will handle everything for us. This is what Kubernetes is. And in this lesson, we'll talk about the main concepts from Kubernetes. Let's say this is our cluster. This box is our Kubernetes cluster. And then inside this cluster, we have nodes. Nodes are actually like machines or servers where things are running. This is node and this is node. Let me write it down. So node is approximately a server or like computer. So we can think of this as, uh, let's say, an EC2 instance. Or if you want to build your own Kubernetes cluster from your old computers that you have at home, each computer would be a node of the cluster. And then on nodes, we have pods. This is one pod, then we have another pod. In Kubernetes, a pod is a container that runs a specific image with specific parameters. Each node can have multiple containers, multiple nodes. Some pods, maybe they take, let's say, more CPU resources, more RAM resources. So this is another pod and another pod. This pod needs less CPU resources, less RAM, doesn't need as much resources as the other pod. And then we usually group these pods in deployments. Deployment then this is another deployment. All the pods within one deployment, they have the same Docker image. So if we think of an example, let's say if this deployment is our gateway service. All these pods for gateway deployment, they all have the same image. In our case, I think it was like Zoom Camp 10 Gateway 002. They all have the same image, the same tag of the image, and they have the same parameters, like the same configuration. And by configuration here, I mean the environment variables and things like that. And the other deployment could be our TensorFlow serving model. This is deployment for our model. It needs more resources to score images. That's why the pods here, they are larger. So they need more resources. And again, the pods in this deployment, they have the same image and same config. So in our case, I think it was ZoomCamp 10 model exception v4001, something like this. So let me write it down. Pod is approximately like Docker container that runs on a node. And then we have deployments, which groups pods that have the same image, the same config. So they are basically the same, exactly the same images. So it's a group of pods with the same image and configuration. And then we have things that are called services. Let's say we have two services in our example. The first one is the gateway service. And then we have our TensorFlow model service. The service is some sort of entry point to our deployment. So let's say we have our user and um, the user, well, it happens indirectly like here. So the user uploads an image to the website and then our website sends a request to our gateway service. So what will happen is that we send the request to this gateway service. This will be the main point of contact for the web application, like for whatever application that wants to use our gateway service. It contacts this thing here. And because we have multiple pods, now service needs to figure out where to route this request. So let's say it decides to 
route this request to this port. A service is responsible for routing the requests. So it can send the request here, or let's say it can send the request here. So it sends a request to any available port and it kind of spreads the load, the traffic across all the available ports in a deployment. So let's say it routes the request here. What happens here is, remember, we download the image, we resize the image, we prepare the image, then we convert this image to protobuf and send the request to TensorFlow serving deployment. But the pods here in the gateway deployment, they don't know how to access specific pods here. What each of these pods does, it then goes to the model service, and then the model service routes the request to one of the pods. So let's say it routes the request to this pod. And then this pod gets the protobuf request. It replies back with predictions. And then this prediction comes back all this way back. And then the gateway gets the predictions from the service and then sends the reply back to the user. Now I want to write it down. So service. We can think of the service as the main point of entry to our deployment, to our pods. So we send requests to the service and then the service does the routing. It gets the request and then decides which pod should handle this. This is the entry point and it routes the requests to the pods. We actually have two types of services. There are actually more, but in this case, we can simplify it a little bit. This service that the user contacts, this is an external service. This service has to be visible outside of the Kubernetes cluster. But the model service does not need to be visible outside of the Kubernetes cluster. So this service is internal. It can only be used by pods in the Kubernetes cluster. So it cannot be used by clients outside of the cluster. So external in Kubernetes terms is called load balancer. And internal, I don't remember something like cluster IP, but this is the default value. So if you don't specify the type of the service, it will be an internal one. I think it's cluster IP. So let me just write it down. If I'm not correct, I will add a note later. I think it's cluster IP. Yeah, and then it's a technical detail. But actually in front of the cluster, we have a thing called ingress. This is what actually clients contact first, and then it routes the request to one of the external services, and then the rest of things happen as we discussed. Yeah, let me write ingress here. This is like the entry point to the cluster. Then one more thing I wanted to mention is, uh, let's say we get a bunch of clients, and all of them want to start sending requests. And to be able to deal with this load, what Kubernetes can do, it can start more pods. So it can start a pod here, can start a pod here, can start a pod here. And well, we can set this in configuration, how many pods we want to have, the maximum amount of pods, the minimum amount of pods. And then Kubernetes, if we configure it properly, it will automatically scale up the deployment when the load increases and it will scale it down when the load decreases. So it can cope with the load. And the thing that is taking care of that is called HPA, which is horizontal port autoscaler. And this is a thing that allocates more resources to the deployment if it needs them. In principle, what it can also do, it sees, let's say, the nodes that we have all are occupied. There are too many pods running on these nodes already. So what it can do, it can request a new node, and then a new node will be created, and then the new pods will be placed on that new node. So this is a mechanism for dealing with increases of traffic, and this is called horizontal pod autoscaler. Most of the things we discussed, we will not need to deal with. So for example, we will not be dealing with horizontal pod autoscalers. We will not deal with uh, ingress, but I'm pretty sure if you work with Kubernetes, these terms will come up and just to help you understand what they are. I downscaled back the cluster. So now we have the old image, but what we will need to use in this session are pods and deployments and then services. So this is something that we will need to be able to set up in order to deploy things to Kubernetes.
And this is it. So let me summarize one more time. Nodes in Kubernetes are things like EC2 computers. Then on these nodes, we have pods, which are approximately Docker containers. Then we group these Docker containers in deployments. So all the pods in a deployment share the same image and configuration. And then the services are points of entry to these pods, to these deployments. So clients, external clients and internal clients deal with pods through services. So we have external services that can be exposed outside of Kubernetes and internal services services that are only visible within the cluster. So this is the summary. And what we will do next in the next lesson is we're going to deploy a simple application in a Kubernetes cluster. So see you soon.